Hello. In this episode, we are going to talk about binomial options. This is one method of uh, pricing options um, numerically. So, and here is a very simple example um, of a two period model of stock price. So initially at date zero, the stock price is $25. And then um, the next period, um, it can go up 15% or go down 15%. There are just only two possibilities. So $25 and then 15% up is $28.75. And 15% down means $21.25. Okay? And the risk-free rate is 5%. So that's the time discount of the money. Then we want to find the value of an add-the-money call option. The call option, um, typically on a option is written on the state zero. $25, and um, that is uh, typically set as the strike price, meaning the money that you pay to get a stock. So when you have that right, uh, and the stock price became $28, then the profit you will make from a call option contract is the difference between the $28.75 and $25, um, because you can buy this $28.75 stock for $25, so you make $3.75 of profit. On the other hand, if it goes down and it's below $25, then you're not going to use that option. So um, the worst they can do is zero, okay? So how do we price that? There are many ways of doing it, but um, here I'm going to introduce a risk neutral approach. Um, and um, here in the simple setting, we have a stock price at date zero, and then date one, it can be stock price at up or stock price at down scenario. And then um, here we'll, denote the value of the option as V. So when the V is up, so in this particular example, it's 375 and V down, which is a zero. And then the question is really, what is the initial day um, option price to get that contract, the right um, to buy a stock at given stock price at time zero. And, uh, and what we do here is the risk neutral valuation. Okay? Um, and um, how it works is that um, we have a hypothetical probability that makes the stock price um, from um, the, risk in, the risky stock price outcome here, that for these two, to be um, risk neutral, different from choosing the today's stock price or tomorrow's up or down in the mix. And, and when would that be the same? So, um, so the way um, one, works out is that, well, the stock price of date zero, discounted by one plus risk-free rate, one plus R, um, should be equivalent to probably Q times S of, plus one minus Q probably of SD. Um, and so the kind of Q that makes this S zero equal um, will be what we call a risk neutral probability, which because it makes the today's stock price and tomorrow's um, risky stock price, Sort of equivalent, isn't it? So, and the main idea about this is that, well, if you have this um, SU, SD, and S0 unknown, uh, you can back out the Q here because that's the only unknown here. And I solved it here. So, that is the risk neutral probability. Uh, the key idea in pricing an option um, in this risk neutral approach is that that same Q is actually used to make. Um, the initial option value also um, true, meaning the probability Q times V up and well, probably one minus Q times V down discounted by risk free rate one plus RF okay, has to equal V zero. But and Q is known, VU, VD and RF, all, everything is known, so V zero can be found. Very simple, isn't it? Let's look at um, an example. So again, so $25 initially, and we have $28.75 or $21.25, isn't it? Up or down 15%. So that is the reality. What is the risk neutral probability? Well, we'll find it out, but with risk neutral probability Q, it goes up, one minus Q, it goes down. And here's a C up and C down, and initial date is C0, call option. So let's first find out the, uh, what the probability is. So you can solve it out. The risk neutral probability, so um, which becomes this formula. So risk a uh, risk a uh, risk free rate is five percent. So one point oh five times initial stock price 
minus 21, 25, 28 minus 21, 25, which gets you two thirds, meaning the risk neutral property Q is two thirds, meaning one minus Q is one third. Okay, so that makes the uh, risky bet of 28, 75, 21, 25, um, discounting by the risk free rate, be equivalent to $25. Also, we do know that what the final day um, option payoff is 375 and zero, which is the difference between the stock price. Um, if it's negative, it's zero. Okay. So we know the Q, we know the formula value. Now it's very simple that what we did the initial value of the option, well, Q times C up, one minus Q times C down, discounted by one plus R. Well, you plug in the numbers here, $2.38. And that is the initial day option price. For the right to, well, uh, pay $25 to get a stock, which the stock price uh, in the future will be changing, I mean, uh, different outcomes. Uh, that is um, the right to have that, uh, the contract that gives you the right to do this will cost $2.38. And that is the price of the option. Okay, so that was a very simple episode of um, $2.38, um, this episode for two period model. Um, you can um, implement this in um, Python. So here is an example. So I posted it here. I'm going to just use the basic NumPy features here. Um, so here's the one step binomial tree. I just make it in a function. It takes the initial stock price, $25, risk cure rate, and up and down 15%. So those are the parameters. Okay. So the S. Up is the initial stock price plus one plus R. S down, and that's the period when it goes down here. Um, it's uh, one minus R times S. And the Q is, again, I'm copying down the formula. So we know the S up, S down, and Q. So, and the strike price is the initial stock price. Um, it's marked at the money. Right? And then the option prices of the valuation at the terminal dates are as up minus K or zero, as down minus K or zero, which gets the common option payoff. And then finally, the initial option payoff is Q times C up, one minus Q times C down, discounted by one plus R, and you return them all. So this is basically just typing down the formulas um, for this simple case, two period model, um, and um, returning the value. So can we test this? Initial value 25, risk free rate 5%, and R 15%. Okay, so let's call this binomial tree one step, this function, call it. And the answer here, we get uh, Q equal 0.6667, which is two thirds, uh, just as we did by hand calculation. And the initial uh, option value is $2.38, just as we calculated. So this is how you calculate um, and implement in Python a binomial option. Okay, okay so um, can you only do two periods? And the answer is no, you can actually extend it to three periods and more periods. So let's have the same option, initial $25 and can go 15% up or down in each period and risk a rate 5%. How do we do that? Well, the first step you do is that you calculate all the future stock prices, which you can, isn't it? I don't know which one will realize, but I know if it moves up, it will be 28.75. If it moves down, it will be 21.25. And from here, 15% uh, up is 33.06. If it goes down, it's 24.44. And um, from 21.25, if it goes down, it's 18.06. Same thing here, 33.06, 15% up is 38.02 and um, going down is 28.10. From 24.44, if it goes down, it's 20.77. Um, and from 18.06, if it goes down, it's 15.05. So these are all um, stock prices, future stock prices. How do we uh, calculate the option? So, so um, well, you start from the back, isn't it? The very terminal day, if I know which stock price realized, then the option value is. Well, I have to pay $25 to get that stock. So the difference, the positive amount of the difference is the option value. So when it's 38.02, I pay $25. Um, then I have a profit of 13.02. If it's 28.10, then I get 3.10. If it's 20.77, paying $25 to get a $20 stock doesn't make sense, isn't it? 
So I'm not going to use the option. The option value is zero. Likewise, at fifteen dollars, it's like this. So, and we calculated the risk neutral probability for one period or however many period. It is always the same um, because the moving up or down um, probabilities and uh, fifteen percent up or down are always the same. So what we can do now is that well, I will take each of these small scenarios as sub sub trees as a two period model. Okay, so in this case, uh, 1302, the option price up and 310, so, so stock uh, option value down, weighted by the two thirds probability and one third probability discounted by future interest rate, 1.05 will get you $9.25. Likewise, how do we get here the option value in this tree? Well, 310 of two thirds and zero of one third discounted by 105 gets you 197. And here, well, rating zero and zero will get you zero. So now that we um, cleared and, and did, um, found out the option values of the second to the terminal date here, these three red boxes, now I can consider this subtree and this subtree. So two thirds of 925 and one third of 997 will get you discounted by 5% is 650 and two thirds of 197 and one third of zero discounted by 105 will get you 125. And then finally, two thirds of 650 and one third of 125 discounted by 105 gets you 452. Okay. Um, since we have more periods the way down, um, actually uh, it was more widely varying. It, the upswings are actually much higher. The initial option value actually is higher than a simple two period model. Um, can we implement that in Python? You bet, isn't it? Um, it's a little bit more involved and um, I could have literally typed all these trees, but I am trying to get it in a little bit more general sense. So if I have N steps, like N plus one periods and give the initial stock price uh, risk-free rate and up or down how much it moves up, I'm gonna create um, the S variable, which contains all the future stock prices and the C variables, all the option values. The risk neutral probability is very simple, the same as the one period. I'm just copying this formula here. Um, um, so I'll get that. Um, and then um, the forward pass, calculating all the stock prices. So I basically have to um, multiply one plus R or one minus R for each of the subsequent stock price realizations. Um, in a for loop, how I do is that I march down for each steps in each period, and then have the stock price as uh, the one plus R of um, the, the proper exponents of up and how much it moves down, isn't it? So, so this is, uh, yeah, it's it. If you do it on pencil and paper, you'll figure it out. I just did the tedious um, backing out the indices of how many times it moved up. That much time I'm doing the 1.15 and how many times it moved down. I am going to do the one minus R, isn't it? And this way you can calculate all the stock price. And then once you figure out the stock prices uh, and the strike price is the initial stock price at zero, the case at zero, um, the last day of option value will be, uh, well, uh, the N minus ones period. Okay? It's the maximum of as the last day stock price minus strike price. Okay? So, can fill up all these boxes, the last uh, period boxes. And then from there, I use a uh, watch backwards, the option prices from the previous, um, uh, the next period option prices. I walk backwards using the risk neutral probability to do this. So again, I did walk out the four loops, so you can just uh, use this, but um, the, uh, the stop option price are based on the next period, II plus one periods. Um, option prices of up and down realization. Uh, and then you can march it backwards to get eventually the C00, the initial date of the option price. So, um, and would this work? Well, you can try $25, 5% and 15% up or down. If I run it, well, the Q is the same, two thirds. Strike price is also the same, $25. The stock prices that computed 25, 28, 75, 21, 25, and so forth, 38, 2, 28, 10, 20, 77, 15, 35. It is 
what we calculated here, isn't it? So it's all matching up, it does correctly uh, computed. And the option values are 13, 3, 0, 0, 9, um, 1.97, 0, 6.5, 1.25, and eventually $4.52 for the initial date. And here, so the program actually does implement what it is. So, so this is a simple demonstration of how to implement binomial option pricing in Python. And the purpose of showing this was to show you the traditional way of how numerically people compute options. Thank you for watching this episode.